All right, what's up YouTube? Um, today I'm gonna show you how I make my tuned dance kick drums. And my I had an older tutorial about this, and it's when I use Reason, it's very out of date. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to make some fat kick drums that you can uh, tune to different pitches and in Ableton Live. And so I'm gonna start by uh, getting an analog up here. Um, I'm not going to use the analog for the kick drum. I'm actually just going to use it to for its oscillator at first because um, I found the analog is really lacking. <laughs> like I, I really don't like it actually. But for the purpose of having a sine wave, then I'm just going to use it to sample the sine wave. So I'm going to uh, I control shift M to get the mini clip in there. Once you've selected the area, and so double click get in there and I'm gonna double click again on the inside of the clip to make a note and I'm gonna make it at C1 I'm gonna make note of that because that's what the original tune of the kick drum is that's gonna be the frequency that when we put it in the sampler that's what it's gonna start on so when I play C3 in the sampler it's actually gonna be playing C1 but yeah and so now I'm gonna go in here and change the amp settings, the decay is all the way up, change it from saw to sine of course and now I'm just going to record it alright so now we got our first sample and I'm going to do, this is just a little trick of mine that I've done in the past I'm actually going to take a uh, saturator down here um, I'm just gonna kinda take a couple different things I'm gonna take a limiter get it all the way um, to its peak so I have more control over the, the distortion so, yeah so right when it starts limiting I'm gonna stop so I know it's maxed out alright so now then I'm gonna take a saturator Saw clip on, and then uh, auto filter. I think will work good for the whoa. Oops, let's get an auto filter. And so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna use this to kind of drive it. And now if I sample it. You should see kind of a fattened waveform that has some nice little size and fatness in it. All right, that one didn't really work, but yeah, try the auto filter. But typically, I use the EQ8. So I'm just gonna grab him, put all these on low pass, kind of artificially stack the order of the filters down here. So instead of having a you know like 64 decibel filter, I'm just gonna stack a bunch of them. So now in here, let's see, give it a little bit, pretty much the farther away I put these from, uh, or the higher frequencies, the more kind of uh, distortion from the uh, overdrive gets through. So let's just see what we got here. That's, that's closing in on it. I'm going to delete this envelope, didn't mean that to be there. Delete this, and then I think this will be good. Actually, going to bring one edge just a little bit lower. And so, this is just something I've noticed from uh, just what I've done in the past. When you start um, with a little bit of uh, color or like distortion in the waveform, you can get a different kind of kick in the end. Um, and so now that we've got our sample, our two different uh, sine waves, I'm just going to turn this one up so it's on par with the other guy. Turn this one down a little bit. And now, I'm going to delete this analog. We don't need him anymore. And I'm going to go and get a sampler. Um, I love sampler. It's easily my favorite sampler out of any program out there. And it's actually great for making kick drums because it has a pitch oscillator section. So I'm going to take, you can simply just select the sample, 
section here and then just literally drag this down and you can see our sine wave chilling in there um, if you really want to get a glamour shot you can uh, something I've noticed you're gonna want to go to the very front and so just click and drag and I'm gonna bring this over to the start of the first sine wave because with analog uh, it actually has an attack period where it's not doesn't hit immediately so starters just do that and so first off um, I'm gonna the whole like flavor and idea of a kick drum is it kind of pitches down very quickly you can't really hear it but that's how you get the the click or the punch of a kick drum so we're not gonna use that we're gonna use this guy and say I'm gonna say about 36 is gonna be the amount and this is this part is kind of about taste over over the time I've been doing this I've realized there's uh, about anywhere from like 150 to 200 is gonna be what we're aiming for and so yeah just also always name stuff so this is um, C1 so uh, C1 tune or yeah it's a C1 sine wave and so when I come in here and just so now this is a new clip for my uh, kick drum I'm just gonna put in a couple beats like that so already we kind of have you know a kick sound with that oscillator punch but that's only part of it you know yeah there's a lot more to kick than that so so if we intrusive okay, decay kind of getting this like laser effect you know just, so about that and um to get more small increments hold down control when you drag up and down so yeah um, so the shorter you go and then i kind of like it about 165 that sounds good to me but also we're gonna have to deal with the amp envelope because I mean the kick depending on what genre you're producing nowadays people have these monstrous kicks like moon baton kicks are just huge and they just they're like they blast at full volume and only tail off right before the next kicks coming in so this is where genre specifics kind of come into play so like lounge or something chill you're not gonna want to have a huge dance like club kick that just obliterates side chains everything else um but right now that's I mean that's these I always I already have my uh, sampler velocity set up so but if you don't have it it's always useful just to put that on a hundred but be aware you gotta lower the volume um to compensate all right let's see so um C C1 is actually a little bit higher than most club kicks. Most are around um, G or F. So a lot of dubstep is actually written in F minor and G minor because of this. Because so you can have the ticks, kicks tuned in the heaviest bass frequencies going down there. So I'll just put this on G for now, so you can really get that fatness going. Um, and so that's a uh, that's the simple part of it, and that's uh, how I get my kicks into sampler and how I use that to synthesize the sound. In the next videos, I'm going to show how I add punch, slight stereo effects, and all the tweaks that make uh, the kick so fat and crunchy. So um, just tune into part two, and I'll continue. Take